We mix our culture with the kingdom. Yeah, man. It's that new summertime anthem right here. This how we do for the kingdom. Yeah, we must work now. Boss down. Yeah, man, get the devil out. <laughs> My name is Ambition of Coach. I'm the first foster care court in the history of the United States. This month is May. It's National Foster Care Awareness Month. And I thought I'd share today that I got adopted. The pictures are starting to be nice. The Red Robbers are starting to chirp on the Ben Franklin Bridge in Philadelphia. That's where I used to live. And my smile is starting to get these steroids. It's starting to crack these chair legs. Wait. I gotta tell you right now, I'm in court and I'm about to be adopted. And these adoption papers are about to be the pedals to these concrete walls. And did I tell you that somebody is finally saying that they love me? I gotta say thank you, God, because he's letting this angel shovel stacks of happiness into my dormitory. I gotta say thank you, Jesus, because I'm not gonna lie. I used to harbor the self-hatred, and that was all the wire to my gargled explosions. I knew that the devil was trying to use my family curse to sow the flag of dependence to my temple. Did I tell you that I used to walk around with a rusted label that said I hate myself and that dangled from my forehead skin? <laughs> I used to walk around with all this leftover hurt that was crammed in Tupperware. You'd be surprised on how many depressing sandwiches that I had to eat, but I faced defeat. But today, but today, <laughs> y'all, I'm finally adopted. I never knew that love has thrusters. That my mother's love and spirit will hover over my heart for eternity. If you don't know what it's like to be adopted, then watch somebody win the championship when they hold up the trophy and their friends are kayaking in champagne. I'm not going to lie to y'all. I felt like I was going to be a toddler corpse with motionless tuck tellers. But today, but today, I feel like I'm in the sky. I feel like I'm slobbering in the clouds. I feel like I'm daydreaming and I'm listening to Biggie lyrics. Wow, I'm in a Jay-Z's way back. <laughs> It's starting to feel like the heaven choir is starting to sing Marvin Sapp, I believe. It's starting to feel like the angels are bobbing their head, lighting candles, singing Kirk Franklin the way that I stomped on the devil's fingers. <laughs> I'm so glad that I was able to escape my childhood demons. I thought the only way they could kill this future foster care poet was through attempted murder. And there was no way I was going to be able to keep this captive in the locket. So the day I thought I'd share with you, the day, the time. I finally was adopted. My name is Ambition the Poet. I'm the first foster care poet in the history of the United States. Welcome back to the culture. Come on, give me a second. So, my my uh, first guest, um, I had her on before, and I must say now, I don't even know who she is. I said, yes, I do. Um, but I'm so glad she decided to come back because I know she has a busy schedule. I'm seeing her sing everywhere and, you know, just blessing people with her voice and her act acting and just different things like that. Please, please, please give it up for Gabrielle Green, you guys. Come on. Welcome back. Um, you are grown up, so I don't know... I the last person I was talking to was like, why, why, why? But now, you're grown. And, I'm, and the thing is, it just tells you how time passes, but you have been consistent. So tell us what's new. Tell us what's going on with your life. Okay, so I think I should start with um, just uh, last time we talked, I think I was telling you how I was just getting back to school and everything. Yeah. Um, so I'm still being consistent with that. I'm still, my grades are good. That's so good. I'm happy about that as well. Um, I'm taking AP classes this year, okay. so that's been going on. Um, in terms of just my art stuff, um, I am working on releasing music right now. I'm really happy about yes. That's good. Um, I do write poetry, so I also am releasing a book as well. But I have been writing for a while, so I decided to just convert some of my poems into songs. Okay. And I've just been really getting a lot of help with that as well, so I'm really excited about that. Um, yeah, so that's basically what's been going on. Um, I've also been working on some political stuff as well. Just okay. over the pandemic, I've been getting more into politics, which I'm finding out something I'm very interested in. 
So I recently became a founding member of the um, Shelton Branch NAACP Youth Leadership Committee. Wow, that's great. That's yeah, great. So that's great. That's great. <laughs> we have been doing a lot of work just within my school district. Okay. Um, we were able to start an initiative to help change the curriculum to be more inclusive, okay. racially inclusive, um, as well as culturally inclusive as well. So we're right. um, working on that. They did put the curriculum on hold until next year, so they okay. are changing the curriculum next year. So we are very instrumental in just adding some things to the history curriculum. Um, and then I've also been working on a disparities and discipline um, initiative as well with the NAACP Youth Leadership Committee. Um, and we recently had a town hall actually last Wednesday. Mm -hmm. We sort of just discussed like the dynamics within our school district. So I'm working very closely with the administration and the school board on that. So how has it been like even with like this pandemic and things kind of like just don't know because even just the city don't know. They don't know what they're going to do because they, you know, sometimes it's a drawback to saying what they was what they were going to do and then now it's like you know sometimes they go back and forth so how is that you know flowing with you guys as far as to do that you know like at the school um, i guess i would say that it is kind of hard because a lot okay. of stuff is very uncertain right. but as we are moving back into a state of normalcy i find that um they're more open to making these changes right away um okay. our discipline initiative actually they changed one of the code laws within our school district okay. um, that punishes um, girls for dress code, I believe. So really? we're able to get that done That's already. Good. That's yes. Okay. So I'm really happy about that because that is an issue that um, I really want to talk about. Just um, how the dress code is the dress code um, discipline rules are just sort of unfair towards girls, I believe. Um, and girls are dress coded, especially black girls are more dress coded than anyone else yeah. at um, yeah. my school. So I was really happy about that too. So a lot of things are on hold, such as like the curriculum, but the discipline things are picking back up as we're like moving back into school. I like that. I like yeah. that. So um, the, I, I see that you're consistent with everything, but the word consistency is like, how are you keeping that word actually relevant in your life? Because um, from what, from the last time and now you're doing more stuff, but it's consistent from what you did before. So how are you keeping that word actually, you know, uh, uh, something in front of you? Like, um, I would say, like, in front of your peers, because your mom is your mom, you know, your yeah. dad is your dad. But away from them, how was like, okay, I'm going to keep this consistency, you know, even with you guys, because I have to stay on the same path. So. Well, I have had to motivate myself. During the pandemic, it could get really, like, just hard sometimes yeah. to do things um, and to be active because you feel like the world's in chaos and nothing, like, really matters. But you really have to just pick yourself up because – even though like the world is on the lockdown, the issues right. are still going on. There's still issues there that need to be addressed. Yeah. And there's still ways I can express myself. So I've really been trying to stay consistent just by motivating myself. I've been trying to just, you know, watch positive videos, yeah. um, read scriptures, just whatever I can do. I actually have a poster in my room that I read every time I take an assessment okay. or I'm going through something really hard in my life. So I've kind of just been doing that to stay consistent, but it has been really hard. I'm not going to lie. Wow. Well, yeah, it's been hard for a lot of people. Um, I, I just think this whole thing is, well, no one knew, you know, um, but people knew. We just didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because if you look on the uh, the spray bottles, it says coronavirus. Yeah. On it. So somebody knew that it was coming or somebody knew that something was happening. But I think this kind of took a shock for like the church, every just everything. Um, so like how, how, cause I know you're still at Mount Airy, Church of Christ, right? So I, I saw you sing there a few times, even I think through the pandemic, I believe. So how is that, like, how is this, how's the system there now? Because I know you can only have a certain amount of people. So how's that working for, you know, Bishop Morris? <laughs> so um, we have been I'm doing sorry, a lot of- I'm sorry, too. Yes. So we have been doing a lot of um, drive-through services. That's what okay. I've been attending, but otherwise we do watch online. Okay. Um, and I've also just been like looking at other- oh, Wait, and you know what? That's it. So looks are deceiving because somebody told me that y'all be having church, like, like four people. I said, oh, well, that might be the case now. I haven't. No, 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 no. It was before. Oh. <laughs> but they was like, you know, the Mount Airy guy, they, they, they going to church. I said, for real? <laughs> I was like, whoa. Because, I, I, I mean, well, my church, I don't know why. But anyway, like, that's that's that, that's what I heard. So I'm glad I heard it from your mouth because, yeah. you know, you just listen. But, but. Yeah, I think they, like, might maybe letting a few into congregate that's good. That's good. um but i wasn't aware of usually we just do like drive-in services okay. or else we like watch online so they might still be letting people in i'm not quite sure okay and i've also just been looking at like other pastors too throughout the week um just listening to their inspirational messages as well and just broadening my perspective because i think that's like really important so. <laughs> no because you don't how old are you now i'm 16 so 16 i don't ooh, you don't you don't hear you blow my mind every time you come, because <laughs> you don't hear you don't hear that. 
you know, and um, you don't hear that in young adults. You don't. You don't hear it like, you know, I'm, I listen to the varieties of, you know, pastors or I'm, I'm listening to, you know, just certain things I'm reading. I don't, I don't hear teenagers saying that. I, I work with some teenagers, you know, in reference to music and stuff like that. And they don't say we want to read. They say they don't know how to read. So that's a blessing that you know how to read. <laughs> and and it, it may sound it may sound corny to some, but that's a good thing to know how to read. Yeah. You know, um, so uh, with all of that happening, um, the, act, the acting, are you looking to get back heavy back into that? Yes, so I'm actually involved with um, the thespian troupe at my okay. school, so I'm getting inducted into that soon. Um, I've just been doing productions there. Um, in addition to that, I also forgot to mention this earlier, but I am in the process of writing um, my own musical um, with one of my friends who's also in the thespian troupe as well. Wow. Um, and it's based off the Billy Joel song, Scene for an Italian Restaurant. Anyone that knows me knows I love Billy Joel. Um, okay, so I'm really excited no to just bit. put together um, a story about... I like Leanne Rand. Yes. Wow. Whatever her name is. <laughs> oh, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, I, you know. Yeah, people so. would think I'm listening to something else. I'm like, no, I'm listening to Leanne Rand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we so have been working on that as well. That's an ongoing project, and we're actually hoping to do an independent study on it in school. Um, So that's going to be an ongoing process as well. We're in the process of writing the music for that. Um, So in addition to writing my own songs, I'm also writing songs um, for the production as well, and so is my friend as well. So... so all so all the things that you you are doing um what's what's when you are when you have this this downtime so wh what do you do like you know because um, you um hmm. okay like it really depends on the day because so i've been getting more into piano again okay i'm um, just playing the piano i'm not like classically trained but i did take lessons for a short period of time okay. right. so i just start playing notes and weird chords and i just see where it goes and um depending on whether the song's better for the musical or like a song that i'm just writing for myself right. just depends how i'm feeling and if i'm not doing that i'm usually writing poetry or um recently i've just been like getting into like talking about different issues like political issues as well to educate myself on what's going on like around mm -hmm. the world too so i'm doing one of those three things wow i like that so why why are you doing all this like who are you doing it for? are you doing it for yourself or are you doing it for your mom who are you doing it for um because when I... you think about the stuff that you do mm -hmm. you know um and i always ask people that, usually when i ask people that they kind of pause because um this, they're working so much to the point where, and I do it myself too, you know, I work so much and somebody asked me one day, they're like, why are you doing all this? Oh, um, hmm. Oh, the sir. Yeah, that's nice. But why are you doing it? You know? Mm -hmm. So, and you know, so who are you doing it for and why? Um, I'm doing it for other people. I, I mean, I guess like everything you do sort right. of like starts within yourself because right. I had to get myself motivated um, and just to sort of just walk into my purpose because right. yeah, everyone tells you like from a young age that like God's going to do something in your life, but you sort of have to walk into that. Like it's not something where you can just sit there and wait. Like you have to be active and do it yourself. Now, let me say something uh, to that. It's funny you said that because people do say stuff like that. They say, God going to use you. And that's, that's not saying that they're lying or they're false. It's just that when a, when a prophecy or whatever comes to you, the problem is we don't live it out. We, 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 people, somebody may say, well, the Lord, well, the Lord told me yesterday he was going to make me a millionaire. And, you, and it, it, I've heard, I, listen, I've heard some, people, some people call me like, you a minute for real? You can't even save a dollar. And I didn't say that, mm -hmm. but I was thinking it. Yeah. But the thing is, it's just that when the, the person has to actually act on, you got to live it. Yeah. So I'm glad you said that. And that's a lot. Of, that's a lot of credit to my mom too, because she sort of had to sort of get me motivated, and my dad too, to sort of get me motivated right. to just not just sit there and just wait for things to happen, but to really just be proactive. So I've been doing that, but it's also for others too, because like I said, like the world is changing around us, and I do believe that like young people especially have to get active into politics because whether you think politics affects you or not, it does regardless, especially for minorities as well, and especially for black women. So it's important that we get involved in these issues that affect us because laws are changing, things yes, are happening is. around us, yes, and we'll get involved. If you get involved or not, it's still going to happen. So it's better right. if you're educated on what's going on. So it is for other people as well. And same with my music. It's always been to just um, inspire people and reach out to people as well. So whatever way I can do that is something that I always want to do, like no matter what I'm doing. Wow, I like that. I like that. <laughs> so, uh, last but not least, I wanted to, because uh, that's your camera. What I want you to do, I want you to tell someone that's looking at, that's going to look at you, you know, and they want to do something of, of magnitude of what you're doing. Inspire them, because right now, a lot of people.
that um, I was talking to uh, Brother Tommy in the car, and we were talking about con uh, consistency, the word. Um, and we were talking about how artists are not consistent. And sometimes what happens with that is because if you don't have the foundation that you have, so you see, so here's the thing, you're going far. And the reason why you're going for it because the foundation you have. Mm -hmm. Many people don't have the foundation. So what happens is when you try to bring that, when you try to bring your foundation to that person, they're not used to that foundation. So they may say, yeah, yeah, I hear you, but they'll still get lax. So we were talking about, you know, the, the word consistency in artists. So what I, what I would like for you to do is encourage somebody that, you know, that's like, hey, I don't want to do this no more because nobody's supporting me or this is, this is bleak. So just encourage someone. Um, so I think, I think that, um, you Justin, can't uh, uh, <laughs> it's right there. Uh, oh, okay. I'm sorry. See, oh, no, I don't okay. know. Just say jobs. Oh, Forgive okay. me. <laughs> Let's cut that, please. <laughs> so she, you know what? You should sit here. I took you. you I, okay. I'm sorry. Sorry about that. Oh, no, I gave you a dollar. That's all I got. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay, should I start now? Okay. Um, well, I would just like to say, like, first that I'm in no way saying that, like, you're not going to struggle with it because I still struggle with it. Um, artists are releasing new music today, and I sort of say to myself, I wish I could write a song that good or I wish I could do something that good. But regardless, you just have to keep pushing and keep doing the work that you're doing. Um, and I know it's hard. It's not easy. But you just have to find those things that motivate you. And you might think to yourself, like, oh, this I'm not doing anything, but it really is going to help someone. And you're your own worst critic. So you think something's bad. You think something's not going to help. But in reality, it actually is going to help someone. And I wouldn't be saying this if I didn't think it was true. Um, and, like, my parents, my family, um, everyone around me is just living proof of that, that, like, you have to do something that's going to inspire other people. So just stay encouraged, especially through the pandemic, um, and just keep working, keep grinding, do what you need to do to just um, get to where you need to be and help other people. So. Wow, that was great. That was great. Um, you remind me, real quick before we go, you remind me of Michelle Obama. Just, uh, just the oh, way... Oh, that's a big... <laughs> no, because the, the way you carry yourself and... Um, the way you uh, the way you speak, um, you speak very proper, you know. And the thing is, properly, sorry, speak very properly. And the thing is, um, you don't get that often, especially with us. Yeah. So that's a great thing. Thank you. So tell everybody where they can reach you, where they can contact you for anything. Okay. That's the so, thing. Yes. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> so my Instagram is just Gabrielle Green, J U S T G A B R I E L L E G R E E N E on Instagram. My Facebook is Gabrielle Green. Um, and that's pretty much where you can find me. Um, just look out because I am releasing new music soon and my poetry book. So just stay tuned for that. And I would love if you would support. Um, and yeah, I'm just really excited for that. So stay tuned and I'll try and be more active as possible. So. Give it up for Gabrielle Green, you guys. All right, we'll be right back after this. Hey everyone, I am T.W. Suggs, the storyteller, and um, I want to share a thought with you, and it's called, Not Until the Juice Runs Clear. And I know why you're, when, you, when I said it, you're like, what in the world is he talking about, not until the juice runs clear? I'll tell you. So anybody who knows me, they know I love to cook. Um, I'm always looking up recipes, I'm always looking up new ways to, you know, make different dishes, um, but one of the things that I cook with the most is chicken. And I, and I don't normally fry it, I normally bake it. And it always says that the chicken is not done until the juice runs clear. And I want to encourage somebody out there right now that sometimes you may, feel, you may feel that you're in a hot situation. You may feel that you're in a situation that's hard. It may feel like people have left. It may feel very difficult right now. But sometimes God is just waiting until that time until your juice runs clear. You look done on the outside. You look done. You look complete. Your skin is crispy. It looks brown. But your juice is not clear yet. So sometimes what God does, he leaves us in those situations. He leaves us in those uncomfortable um, predicaments and those uncomfortable scenarios until our juice runs clear. But I, wanna, I feel I need to encourage somebody who's watching right now. Your juice is running clear. And I feel in my heart to tell somebody that you're on your way out of the oven. I know it's been hot. 
I know it's been difficult. I know it's been lonely and I know it's been hard, but you're on your way out because your juice is running clear. And all I feel to tell you is well done. Your juice is running clear. Welcome back to the coach, you guys. Come on, give yourself a hand. All right, so my next guest, I lie that to you. I've been trying to get him for almost two years. I've been like, hey, can you come? Oh, man, that's a bad date. Can you come? No, that's a bad date. All right, what about this date? Because ain't nobody doing nothing. Yes, I am. That's a bad date. So I'm, I'm, I'm so glad that I got him because I've been looking at his stuff and the man can preach. Um, and teach, because that's a great thing to do. Um, please, 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 please give it up for Matt Bowden, you guys. Come on. So, I'm glad you're here. Thank you, man. <laughs> when it's I saw you get down here. Yeah, when I came to when I came to there, I said, wow, you're here. God is good. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you're doing a great work. Thank and um, being a pastor, I don't, I don't know how it is. You know, um, I ask a lot of people that that become pastors, like, you know, how is that for you? Because, like, when did you answer the call? Yes. Man, well, my father was a pastor. Okay. Up. Uh, he's retired now. He's seventy-two. He was a minister for almost uh, just a little over forty-five years. He was okay. saved out of the drug culture in the seventies. Mm -hmm. He was a hippie man. A guy. I mean, he was facing, I think, like nine years in in uh, in prison. God miraculously intervened there. Wow. Uh, he got arrested. It was like, I think it was 1971. There was like 69 people arrested, and wow. he was one of them. And yeah, but I'm a product of grace and mm. a product of, I believe, uh, my father's faithfulness to the ministry. And, wow. Um, but I could trace my call back to the date, man, July 17th, 1994. I was two days away from being seven years old, man. Uh, wow. A traveling evangelist named R.W. Shambach came to yes. my church. You, yes. How you familiar with the name? Yes. I mean, the church service is in there. Yeah. Listen, dude. Yeah. There ain't nothing. I just got chills, man. Yeah. Because there ain't nothing like an R.W. Yeah. Shambach service. And uh, that night, we're I not saw, gonna have that no more. Yeah. No. Think, no, no. That was a different that was dispensation. It. That, was it. that was it. And yeah. um, I remembered three triplets that I had grown up with. I know these kids, and they okay. were they were mute and deaf. And that night they spoke and they yeah. heard. And the mom was like, she was laid out. She was done. Yeah. But I remember like um, holding myself up on a tent pole and like standing up on the concrete column and um, and just praying for the kids. Like, because I knew them. Yeah. And dude, God did it. Like they miraculously wow. unlocked their ears and their mouths. Like I said, mom was laid out. She just couldn't even believe it. I mean, our church couldn't believe it. Um, but it was real. Like, yeah. You can't oh, yeah. fake that. No, no, no. You can't no. fake it at all. Yeah. Yeah. And um, R.W. Shambach said, there's a young man in the crowd who's, you know, God's got his hand on your life. He's calling you into full-time ministry. And I thought he was talking about my older brother, okay. David, because he was uh, 10 years old at the time. And everybody was always said, like, oh, David, he's the, the eldest son. I'm the youngest out of three. Okay. Um, but he's going to be the preacher. Wow. And I'm like, Dave, he's talking about you. And he's like, no, no, the young man right there on the temple. And that was me. And I got the call into full-time ministry there. And wow. um, it's been history ever since, man. So, I, I mean, wow. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> wow, that's awesome. Now, it's for W. Shambach. Yeah. To, that's, that's, all right, you got, I, I'm, I'm trying not to go back there. You know, I, I, I went, went to some of his tent service. I was yeah. like, man, whatever. And my mom was like, I'm going to smack you. Yeah. Be quiet. But, you know, because I was saying stuff like that. I was like, she phony now. She phony. Right. And I fell out because she smacked me. <laughs> but she did. She, <laughs> she was like, you. I said, Absolutely. you know. But the thing is, though, that's 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 like that's real foundation foundation yeah. to to do that. So from that more so, um, how was it to actually? Um, because I know you, when you were younger, you know, you, you saying, "Okay, God, you calling me," yeah. you know, and then you have your peers around you, like sure, like how was that? <laughs> well, like, it's it's like I believe very firmly that if you don't struggle with, wrestle with, grapple with your calling, then it doesn't belong to you. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like that. Woo! It's like that that Jacob and the angel experience. Like, there's that moment where you're like, you know what? Like, I'm fighting this. I'm wrestling with it. But then finally you hear the voice of God like, no. Nah. Like, I'm going to change your future. 
And when you submit to that process, man, it's it's amazing because I'm doing things. God has taken me mm. all over the world to preach the gospel. And these are places I would never have dreamed of going or people I've never been dreamed of standing before. And it's all God's work. I mean, he lines it up. You just become submissive to it. So, so <clears throat> when you... Uh, Okay, because I, I mentioned to you while you're talking about R. W. Shema, yeah, um, that we're not gonna have it no more. Why do you think that, or why do you think, or why do you know that we may not experience that? Now, I believe that God can do all things. Absolutely. I do believe yep. that. I do believe he, we can see signs, you know, power, you know, signs, healing, miracles. I do believe that, and I still believe in that today. Yeah. Um, but why do you think now we're having a struggle with actually seeing that? I would say just the first and foremost is submission, man. These early evangelists sold everything. Yes, they did. Um, in fact, like the early evangelistic movement, um, you know, I want to say like the Healing Hands movement and uh, even like the charismatic Catholic movement where mm -hmm. my father tells me of, uh, you know, Catholics being saved on the Atlantic City boardwalk in like thousands of Catholics coming, you know, rebirthing in their faith. But um, I just think it's just nobody is willing to sell out and submit. It hurts, man. Wow. And you gotta, you gotta Ooh. be ridiculed. You gotta be ready to not be the famous one per se. Um, and you gotta be willing to do some stuff that is going to sound crazy, look crazy. And I, I don't even know, if, like, if I'm there, dog. Like, I'm just saying, like, for real. Like, I, I do want what God wants for me, but at the same time, I'm like, but, but not that one thing that it's gonna. Be uncomfortable right. for me everything right. but that god but I, I think that and also too i really believe that the world isn't hungry for the things of god because they have all they need you know why you why do you need faith when medical science can produce most of the miracles that we are asking wow. for so wow. we rely on worldly means when god was like i'm your provider like I can take care of that. You don't have to go to a hospital. I'm not saying, look, look my mom's a breast cancer survivor, mm, you know, took her chemotherapy and that saved her life. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Like my sister, uh, thyroid cancer, um, mm. and my mom had breast cancer, double mastectomy, you know. Um, I had a bout with skin cancer, you know what I'm saying? So wow. cancer runs in my family. I'm not unwise, but at the same time, though, it's like, do we really have faith or not? Mm. Or are we just playing church? Mm. <laughs> Y'all can feel what I feel up here. <laughs> it's the anointing <laughs> and strong too. Um, yeah. So I don't even know what to say. <laughs> I don't. So, uh, man, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to get myself together. I don't know. Like when you said that, you don't know if you're there either. There are times I question myself. You know, I, yeah. I say, God, okay, you sure? Because. I, I, this is this is crazy, you know. You know, um, I, I I constantly, constantly struggle with this, you know, and I'm constantly praying about this because yep. this is the thing that's like, you know, this, you know, you should be, and it's, it, and then it's like the struggle. But the, the, I, I'm glad you said that because it's so real, and I don't think people, uh, you know, somebody said to me the uh, no a few few months ago, God ain't real, and I said really, you know, yeah. he's like no, he ain't real. I said oh, okay, you know. So he had his foot. He said, "Oh God!" I said, "He is real." <laughs> you you it, right? Yeah. So, um, wifey. Yeah. Uh, so when you met her, did she she knew you was pastor, or you know, or she knew. You so was she was actually a student in my father's ministry. Oh, and okay. I was, just, I was just back from school, um, from Bible school, and trying to figure out what God really had for me, and um. Then she went off to college. She went to Rowan, graduated from there. And, okay. Um, but she sang in the church. And obviously developed a friendship with her there. But um, she's wicked talented mm -hmm. and ridiculously beautiful. I mean, no joke. Like, I always laugh when, like, the ministers come in. Yeah. And they're like, you know, my smoking hot wife is on the front row. They're like, baby, please stand up. You're like, am I messed up for that? You know what I'm saying? No. Am I messed up for that? I was like, that's your wife? Regularly. <laughs> oh. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, like, like oh, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> like, all right, do your thing. Do your thing. I, am I vain? I don't know. Maybe I'm vain for that. But, um, the thing you know, is, they said, she's, they said smoking hot wife. Right. But no, wait, oh, that's, that's, that's my right, right. What? Yeah. It's <laughs> like when someone has an ugly baby and the baby's just born and they're like, look at my beautiful baby. Like, oh, isn't he something? 
He's something. I like his shoes. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> he got his father's eyes, you know? Yes. But <laughs> I messed up. Anyway, but my, my wife is like a legit model. So, okay. um, yeah. So she's awesome. We've been married for a year and uh, some change. We got married like right before pandemic. We good. went on, yeah. <laughs> Listen, it wasn't even supposed to happen. It was supposed to happen March 29th. Uh, you're right. Amen. Amen. So we're going to struggle together. You know yes. that, right? <laughs> so we went on our honeymoon. We came back. I went and I preached at a conference in Orlando. And then I went and um, on a mission trip to Costa Rica. And then the world shut down. And yeah. So. Wow. wow. But marriage is great. I love it. Love my wife. She's awesome. Shout out to my wife. Married. That's good. That's good. Um, so um, she, I'm sure she's in the ministry with you. And yes. You know, okay. Yeah. okay, good. So um, you have kids? Or, no, no, I got a dog and a cat. That's it. Okay, are you planning on? like, or? Yeah, later on down the road. We're okay. trying to travel a little bit. I like Kinda that. Kind of COVID interrupted like life, but we're we ain't in a rush. I like that. Yeah. I like that. I wish I... Listen, because I'm a youth pastor, right? Okay. Okay. And, you know, and, and I work at a school, so... Uh, I got a lot of kids. You know, I got like 500 kids I take care of on a weekly basis. Yeah. So they're enough for me right now. I hear that. Yep. <laughs> yep. So um, do, you, uh, do you have anything new coming up or like, or what's going on with you? Yeah. So um, last year, shortly again before pandemic hit, I was asked to chair um, something for our, my county. I live in Burlington County. Okay. And um, state parole board sought me out and they wanted me to chair their re-entry task force. Wow. And that's basically just helping formerly incarcerated people get back up on their feet, help them get back adjusted in society, get them connected with a good church that knows how to minister to people who've been incarcerated because that comes with a whole yeah. boatload of issues, yeah. um, helping them find stable income, um, dealing with them mentally, emotionally. Mm. And readjusting to the world is not easy. Yeah. Um, and... Man, it's just amazing to see uh, community partnerships built there, um, learning to navigate. Um, like the young lady who was just on here, Gabrielle, she was just talking about navigating like the political landscape. That's a president. That's our next president. Absolutely, yeah. man. She was so well spoken. Yeah. I was like, dang, how was she? She's so so well spoken. Um, but being able to get audience with mayors and town council people, and you know. County Office of Emergency Management and State Parole Board and um, lawmakers who are changing and working with these community uh, agencies to change laws to help people wow. stay out of jail, right? Okay. Get out of jail uh, quicker and to readjust to society. I need to talk to my uncle. <laughs> I got you, man. Listen, right, I and you know, I, I, and it's crazy because I never had that burden. Okay. I never had that burden. That's a God burden. Wow. You know, um, it was just an opportunity that God said, hey, will you be faithful in this? And I'm like, I, okay. They, they, they had that at my church once. It was the prison ministry. Sure. And it, <laughs> and the pastor was like, hey, Basha, you should. I said, no, I shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> he said, it's, no, you you go in there and you, you minister to the, 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 the inmates. I said, no, yeah. oh, not me. <laughs> but, yeah. you know, I, I just thought that, you know, when people went in there, those that went in there, some of them, they, they, they wasn't in prison. Yeah. But they still were able because that was their ministry, and it's always good when you know your ministry or you yeah. know that what you're supposed to be in because yeah. you know the church is good for putting people that's not in that doesn't have the gift yeah. in a position. Come on, man! But they do it all the time. You, know? you can say you can't, but you know. listen. Sometimes in the church world, we mm -hmm. honor faithfulness over fruitfulness. I'm just saying it's a wow. it's a bad habit in the church. We got to stop. I believe that. I believe oh, that. you know, sister so and so, she's been serving that ministry for forty years. Well, there's a reason why nobody's in the ministry. Yet, right? <laughs> you right. know what I'm saying? This like, is true. And look, I'm a pastor's kid. I love the church. I love yeah, the kingdom so I. work. Mm -hmm. And but I get upset when again we honor those positions yeah. and those titles because of someone who got them by default I rather agree. than showing a actual calling of God. I love I when when Paul calls Timothy into the ministry. Mm. He's like he's like, remember that gift. Stir up that gift and operate in that gift that I, you know, confirmed when I laid my hands on you. I feel like there's a there's a, a bad habit of people gaining positions in the church and operating ministries and directing ministries who have never shown 
uh, fruitfulness in the first place to be in that position. Mm. It does a huge detriment, not only to the kingdom of God, but to the people that we're supposed to be evangelizing in the first place. Wow, wow, wow. Man. So, listen, I need you to tell everybody where they can reach you because if you, <laughs> you can stay up here all day and we got other guests. So, Absolutely. tell everybody yeah. where they can reach you. Man, I got to have you back. Tell everybody where they can reach you and that's your, I think that's your camera. Awesome. Yeah. So you can find me Woo! on Facebook uh, at Matt Baldwin, M-A-T-T-B-O-U-D-W-I-N. Uh, uh, same thing on Twitter and Instagram as well. Um, let's be friends, y'all. Let's connect. Let's do kingdom work together. Matt Baldwin, you guys. Come on, give it up. Welcome back to the coach, you guys. Come on, give yourself your hand one more time. So, so uh, my next guest, we, I had it on before, and it seemed like everybody I had on before, they're doing much better than what they did before. Not saying they wasn't doing horrible, it's just that they're doing better. So listen, I need y'all to give it up for her pastor now, Tyler G. Martin, you guys. I, I was like, what? She, and I knew it was there, but like, when? So I actually oh. have been ordained since 2005. Um, and so it's not new. I've been doing the youth pastor thing. Okay. Um, I was talking to a friend not too long ago, and it, we were joking. Just uh, Aretha Franklin has a story when they asked her father, you know, um, what did you do when Aretha left the church? It's like she never left, and it's the same. I never mm. left. You know, I've been in, in ministry for a long time, youth pastor for about 10 years, um, campus pastor at a church called Dare to Imagine in the city of Philadelphia okay. for a minute. Um, went back to help my parents in their ministry during the pandemic and, and that kind of thing. And God led me to promise this church. So. Wow. wow. So <laughs> I'm going to ask you the same question. That, uh, when, when did you hear it? Like, mm -hmm. when did you, like, I'm with it. Um, I received the call, you know, young. Obviously, I was in music ministry for a while. At right. the age of 14, I attended Girls High. Okay. Um, and we gospel choir and it turned from gospel choir to just an that. overall very flourishing yeah. ministry and so that for me was my first you know time pastoring um, a group of young women and, and God grew that ministry from about 13 girls to about 60 girls wow. solid so and that happened like immediately so it's been there it's been there and I, I don't forget it it is I just do whatever God tells me I watched a few in your summer I said I appreciate this girl it gonna, this girl gonna teach. I That's, appreciate and it and you know what it's it, the app don't fall too far from the truth because I heard about your mom Yep. So, you know, I'm a pre PK yeah. three times over, grandfather, yeah. <laughs> you know, mother, father, the whole nine, the yeah. whole family. So, um, with, with the pandemic going on, so mm -hmm. how is it like to function like at the church? So it's odd because again, uh, the, the experience that I had in terms of, um, the campus pastor position introduced me to the world of live streaming okay. and doing things of that nature. And that happened my, my end date, or it wasn't originally my end date, but my end date was legit right before the pandemic started and blew up and so i felt like god's timing was perfect i told you know my mentor pastor uh kj um that it was only god that i had three months or a little over three months to learn what people take three years to learn right. and it the timing of it was perfect so promises ministry was birthed during the pandemic our first service um installation service was december um 2020 and first service was 2021 so you know it, it we started with the, the mindset that okay this has to be online so we, we went into it like that and so i think god has really blessed us tremendously we have members you know all over atlanta georgia we have people watching in istanbul turkey and costa rica and different places and so wow. god has done some amazing things thus far this year so that's good that's good so it blessing. seemed like you know god is uh, well it don't seem like but it is it is mm -hmm. god's blessing his people within Absolutely. you know um and that's that's a great thing because it's like now you got to trust me mm -hmm. so you know i'll take you here but you gotta trust me so um <laughs> I know you have your sister. I think it's going to come, but your assistant pastor. So Correct. how did that come about with you guys working together? It's awesome. I met him at Dare to Imagine, um, and he prayed. And when I heard him pray, I was like, whoa, you know, and, and I joke with him all the time. Every time he prays, I, I laugh. And it's not that it's funny or comical. It's just like, wow, watching God, you know, come out of somebody in that way. Yeah. And he's amazing. I, we, we connect this a heart thing, and we okay. say it all the time. This year and this season is, is, for me, I've been meeting people just to have the heart of God, right. you know, to love God's people, no judgment. We're not looking you know to to you know peel your life apart you know we believe the holy spirit has a job and i believe heavily in letting the holy spirit do what he's supposed to do and so we love on people a whole lot we give you the word and 
do your thing, you know. I, I, I'm commending you because I do see that. I mm -hmm. do see the love, and I do see how you love on people mm -hmm. that are ones that could be judged. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because <laughs> I believe that God is allowing... Through this pandemic, from what I was from from my experience and just seeing things and experience other people's experience, mm -hmm. um, God has birthed, not birth, but He's allowing people to develop this closeness and and, and mm -hmm. this closeness with Him at home. And then yes. He said, "Now I want you to go out Absolutely. because this is the time." Now there there, there have been times where you know um, you had a lock, mm -hmm. you know you had to be locked down. Like, no, you can't do this right mm -hmm. now. But God's like, no, 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 this is what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. I'm going to create. Now, nah, I'm not going to create, but I'm going to allow. Mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm not going to even send it. I'm going to allow y'all right. to create a pandemic. That's right. And I'm just going to just use that mm -hmm. so I can get their attention. But the whole thing is, mm -hmm. it's like, um, I like the fact that you love on people because mm -hmm. the people that you're loving on, mm -hmm. some of the church won't love on. And so. that's, that's so our ministry, we're very heavily uh, influenced um, and, and tied to the You Matter campaign, you know, and, and we want people to know that they matter. A lot of people have been pushed out of a, yes, a lot of churches for rules and regulations and traditions and things of that nature. And, you know, I read my word and there are things that, you know, the Bible tells us we should do and we shouldn't do. But one thing it tells us of all of these commandments, the greatest is you love the Lord your God mm -hmm. and love, you know, your neighbor as you love yourself. And so the first part of that is obviously loving God. The second part is you have to learn how to love you and I think a lot of people mm, mess up with wow. that. I can't love on you the right way if I haven't learned how to love myself and so once I get to the point where I learn to love me then I can show you love and I think a lot of problems with a lot of folks in some of the churches is that they don't know how to love themselves let alone you know love people it's a um, very um, awkward space people are not authentic you know, mm -hmm. nowadays, and, and we're putting on a front, and you dress up for church, you throw on your Sunday's best, and you go in there nasty on the inside, and you mm -hmm. look nice on the outside, and we don't believe in that. And so, you, you and know, man, I don't listen. I, think of. I don't, I don't sub sub subscribe to that. I was taught differently, and, and yeah. so I believe that, you know, I, I, I want to show you the love that God showed me. I'm imperfect, but I, I go before God bare. I go before God authentic. I don't feel like God can make the change that I need to be made on the inside of me um, if I go to him any other way. And so I don't want people to feel like they have to hide who they are in order to get God. You don't need that. I don't think that God wants that. I say this all the time. Well, I don't say it all the time, but I say it when it's appropriate. That, like, I, I know I was, when I was coming up in the church, uh, I, I grew up at uh, Deliverance, Evangelist mm -hmm. Church. Yep. So, I ain't going to lie. They were, they, I, I was scared into something. Mm -hmm. I ain't, ain't going to lie. Mm -hmm. you know? However, mm -hmm. and what I mean by scared, um, I was I, I was watching the burn of hell. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, that's... <laughs> I don't want to go. Ooh. And, you know, the, the, not Pastor Smith, but it was a particular mm -hmm. pastor that was like, y'all going to hell. I was mm -hmm. like, I'm not going. So, <laughs> <laughs> so immediately, I was like, Jesus, I don't know what hell is about. I saw people burning. They was like, God save me. It. So I said, I don't want that. Mm -hmm. So, but I didn't know what salvation was. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what it was. I didn't even know who Christ was. I just heard Jesus. And that's the problem. We're taught about hell and going to hell before we're taught about God's love and salvation. Woo! So I don't yes. believe in any of that. Um, not saying I don't believe. I believe that there's a heaven and hell where it says that, but I I don't believe in scaring people into to right. Christ. I don't think you have to. I grew up in a very awkward organization called Mount Sinai Holy Churches of America. What? What's and up? we wore only black and white <laughs> and we wore the doilies on yeah. our head and I knew about control top stockings before I knew about boyfriends or anything of that sort. And so, I mean, that's great and, and nothing against them, but I, I just, I, I can't do it. It wasn't for me. Um, I don't believe that if I put an earring in my ear and I'm cute and I like to adorn myself with jewelry that I'm going to hell. You know, I got a few tats. It is what it is. I still love God. He loves wow. me. And so, you know, that's that's kind of where we are like my knees out glory to god you know all that so <laughs> it's what it is so um so i know that like um uh, so I think the, uh, there's like the pandemic's lifting. Mm -hmm. So how are you? Uh, what do you guys want to like? What's the plan? Like because I know so it's lifting. last Sunday God has really been blessing. Last Sunday was the first Sunday that we were able to advertise and put our address on there. Um, and yeah. and God showed up and He showed out. Um, and so you know hopefully we can stay in that space you know another month. But God is moving, so I don't really know right now. We're looking for some commercial space, warehouse space. So if anybody knows anything, let us know. Mm -hmm. um, but but God is blessing it. And honestly, this is not. I don't know the plans, you know, like I don't know all of what God is doing and I'm just comfortable and in leaning into him and, and what he has planned. I know that he's going to do exceedingly abundantly above what I could ever ask or think. You know, I know that, you know, he has plans of hope in the future for me. I know even in, in times like the pandemic, I feel kind of like, you know, the ch children of Israel when they were, you know, sent off to Babylon and it might have been 70 years, my situation, not 70 years, but I know that the struggle is rough and I know that in the midst of that, God is still birthing hope in the future and I hold fast to his promises, of course, and that's 
you know, the whole point of promises church, but God has made almost 8,000 promises to us in his word. Mm. There are promises from, you know, God to us and there are promises from man to man and man to God, but God himself made us about 8,000 promises. And so we're just dissecting and going through all of them and just studying God and how good he is. So. See, I didn't even know how many promises <laughs> you made until you said it. Well, you know, I was thinking if I had to name the church promises, I had to do a little bit of research. Yeah, yeah. you know, I, I, I just go to what's one, just stand on my word that was a, and just be still. God, okay, that's not really a problem. That's a, that's a command. You tell me be still. But it's a lot of them in there, man, and I'm holding fast to those. Yeah. Wow, that's that, that man, that's great. God is in here. So I, I, I wanted to ask you, mm -hmm. um, what what is your take on uh, same thing I'm gonna ask mm -hmm. Matt, Matt what your take on mm -hmm. why we can't mm -hmm. <laughs> get to what we have. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm not saying that, you know, my mom said to me the other day, she said, we got to go past, we got to move, we got, what she said to me, she said something about, she was saying a lot, mm -hmm. um, and I just be listening, like, yep, mom, I know, but, you know, mom, I love my mom, mm -hmm. but, you know, um, somebody was going to try to say something to my mom, I was like, no, you know, but anyway, mm -hmm. that's something different, but she said something about pressing towards the mark, mm -hmm. and I said, what does that mean, mm -hmm. you know, so she said, you got to go forward, don't go backwards, mm -hmm. I said, but if I don't remember where I came from, how can I go forward, she said, don't do that with me. Mm -hmm. But, but the thing was, I understand what she was what mm -hmm. she meant. So, and I'm not saying we should go back mm -hmm. to that because God is a forward God. Mm -hmm. um, but why? It's like it's like because I ain't gonna lie. Because I I get up and I start. I even told my pastor this, so it's not like I don't have to hide nothing. Mm -hmm. I met with him on Sunday and I said I'm struggling, mm -hmm. and he said, Well, what? I said, Well, no, not with my flesh. I'm just struggling. <laughs> I had to say that real quick. But I said I'm struggling because when I'm doing praise and worship, mm -hmm. you know. Um, they just sit there. Mm -hmm. He said, "Cause they not some." He said, "Some people are not there." Mm -hmm. I said, "They've been here for church has been ten years. The church has, a <laughs> so, lot of churches okay. been filled with a lot of people, and 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 not to say this is with every church or all right, you know right. all, all across the board, but a lot of people just come out of habit." People come because they were forced. People come because it's something to do on Sunday. People come because sometimes the churches, they the nice ones, get a good meals after the service. You know, it's different reasons they hungry. I went to one. They had Lord, nice they stuff. hungry. We do um, wrap snacks and stuff for communion. Stop okay. by Promises Church. Wrap <laughs> snacks and yeah, all the good stuff. But um, yeah, we do. We don't. We do the ranch ones and the honey um <laughs> But um, no, I, I think I think that you know the world is changing, and I, I think you know part of the become all things to all men is acknowledging the fact that things are not going to always be the same and everybody is not the same and so there might be the corner churches and they might still operate the same and there are people that will still go and subscribe to that but I believe that even in the midst of this pandemic, God is doing something greater. People that never sought God are seeking God. We have um, an advisory board, and it's made up of various people, different backgrounds, and actually different faiths, if I'm being honest. I want to know what other pe other people are thinking, what their mindset right. is, um, so that we can win those souls as well. I don't believe we're just winning people who might be Christian, people who have no faith, but I believe that God is going to transform some folks that profess another faith and bring mm -hmm. them to Christianity. And um, one of our board members, he is um, actually, uh, he grew up in a Hindu mixed family, Hindu and Muslim uh, upbringing household. Um, he's Trinidadian and Indian wow. um, and, and very dope, dope guy from New York. And shout out to Rishi. Um, Rishi, you know, had another faith when he came aboard and I was not asking him to change his faith. I wanted his opinion as, you know, based on his background. And since being a part of the Board of Promises, watching the service, you know, he's now saved. And so I wow. believe that God is doing, you know, amazing things right now. And I think that we have to kind of be... I, I, also, too, believe that, you know, God will, you know, the word tells us, we lift them up, you know, he'll do the drawing. I believe that each, you know, minister or each pastor or each person, even praise and worship leader, whatever your responsibility is, you know, to God in the church, whatever call God has on your life. I believe that there's a certain demographic for you. And I think one of the things that we got to stay focused on is if just following God and being obedient to God. I don't think we need to, you know, try to win everybody. I think your mm, ministry might wow. be geared towards, you know, the older demographic and then somebody else's might be towards some a, a different group of people so i believe if we just trust god and then follow god i believe that he'll do all the rest wow. okay <laughs> well um <laughs> What's new coming up? Like, uh, do you have anything coming up? I got some dope stuff coming up. So, That's your camera. Listen, my over here, my <laughs> camera. Yeah, shout out to y'all. So listen, y'all know we love Samo, and we bringing Samo back, and we bringing them back to Promises mm. Church, you know, and what we do events. We, we we bringing them back again. We're bringing Kafir Rollerson back. Um, you know, like we 
we're trying to do some dope stuff for, for, for the city, for, for the creatives, you know, always like, you know, and so God is doing that. That's in June. Look out June and then July 23rd for the Samo concert. Um, so we have service every Sunday, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 6182 Ridge Avenue, Promises Church, PHL on all social media. Um, check the website out, too. I, I did a lot of work on that. Promises Church, um, you know, dot org. Check that out. It's a nice little pop up on your phone screen. Open up real nice, fancy, you know, all that. Yes. Yeah, I must say that I, I I commend you, and I'm so I proud of you. I appreciate you, and I thank um, you for having me. And you're different. I'm, I'm trying. No, no, no. You're, no, you're different from last time. <laughs> it's like it's a glow, and I like it. And I'm not saying you had you had to go before. Now you gonna have to invite me back, but that's another conversation. Oh, okay. Good. Uh, okay. Yes. It's a little different. It's a little yes. different. It's not Jesus glow, but I'm joking. Okay. <laughs> God is good. All right. Okay, I like that. Yo, please give it up for Pastor Tyler, uh, Tyler Martin, guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yo, Hi, I'm Winter Williams, minister, author, relationship expert, and I'm here on The Culture with Bashir Ho. excited to share about what God has done since I've been here last. I've gotten married uh, to the love of my life and had a supernatural marriage uh, encounter, so things have definitely been hopping, and I'm so grateful uh, just to be here and share what God is doing, the ministry he's birthing, uh, the community outreach endeavors that I have uh, collaborated with my husband on. Uh, Again, I'm just excited to be here, excited to share and connect with you all today. Welcome back to the coach, you guys. Come on, give yourselves a hand one more time. So as I was saying before, I had this guest before and she's back on, but she's different with somebody else. Uh, and I, everything's just changed, but change is a good thing. It's a good thing. Um, please, please, please give it up for uh, Mr. Kevin. Mm, let me just say this right. Kevin and Winter Williams. Come on, give it up for that. Welcome back to the show. I'm so glad you guys are back. So, this is new. <laughs> Different. Yes. So, tell us. Yes. When so, I, I was here by myself the last time. Preaching the good relationship gospel. <laughs> Little that I know, <laughs> the Lord had something in mind for me. Literally, like a, not even a couple of months after yeah. doing the show. Yeah. And so, um, my husband and I started courting. We're, we're old-fashioned term courting. Courting. Yeah. Um, courtship. In, on yeah, in February. Covenant courtship. Covenant, covenant. courtship. Okay. Yes, we dated intentionally. So covenant courtship from February to June. We got engaged June 6th of 2020, so we can relate to the pandemic dating. We did pandemic courtship and got engaged on June 6th, married July 5th. Wow. And so our year anniversary is coming up wow. in a couple of months. That's so great. I want to get married, psych. <laughs> <laughs> so, but this is so great. So um, I, I see you guys traveling, which you should be doing. That's good. Um, I'm not saying you should be, but... It's, it's a great thing to see that because um, you don't see that much African Americans doing it, and so, like, let me ask you guys a question. So, I, you was mentioning during the break that you have six between you two. Yes. How does that work? Like, how black, does that work? Black Brady Bunch. There's never a dull moment. Disney Ever. World in our home every day. Every day. Yes. <laughs> three wow. boys, three girls. So your blended family. Yes, blended family. So, how? I'm asking how does it work because um, I mean I wouldn't know. But I've seen people do it, you know, like, but how did you guys, like, come to this agreement? Like, this is how we're going, you know. So I think, honestly, one of the things I can share is that he was very intentional in the courtship about making sure he really understood and knew my kids. And so wow. I like to say, as I was getting courted, the kids were getting courted, too. Wow. As spoiled That's as good. I am, That's the good. kids are spoiled as well. And so I'm your child I, too. I want to go to uh, Africa. Where y'all go again? Where was it? We've been to three countries. Yeah, three countries and ten cities. I'm your child. I'm her son too. Yeah. Right. <laughs> See, look. Oh goodness. Go ahead, go ahead. So go ahead. I, I think in a blended family, I think if you both come in, there is no such thing as step in our house. Everyone is wow, treated like the that. same. I Absolutely. Like I like so that. just like he he loves my kids like they're his own. I love his kids like they're my own. Mm -hmm. His son calls me mommy. I do not deter wow. him from that. Son. Yeah. And 
I've only known him, you know, for a year and he has came right in. And so I really just think it's a matter of my husband explained it best, agape love. Wow. When you're called to, to love someone as Christ loves the church, that agape love flows to whoever is connected to them. And so kids are included in that. So we have blended very, very well. Wow. Uh, no drama. I mean, we have ages 19 to 2. And so Ooh, we have like 19 to 2. There's wow. a huge gap. So there's no like, well, so with the two, it's not a terrible two with this per, with this one? No, or no, it's just, you no, know how I say the two? No, okay. no, no, no. Wow. That. It's been, I mean, really God has blessed us. I, I just, I can't say that it's the same. I know there's challenges with blended families. Actually, blended families have the odds stacked against them when yeah. uh, second marriages typically fail the most if they're in a blended family um, structure. But I think because we're both very committed to our relationship with the Lord first, our relationship with each other, and then it's the kids. And so because they see that reflected, um, I think it has helped us form a very strong blended family foundation. So, okay. Go ahead. So when you when you I, I, we heard her talk before. So when I'm not I'm joking. So when you met her, when you saw her, what did you say? Oh my! Don't say don't say exactly what you said because it's Christian TV. So <laughs> well, obviously, Winter, my wife is very beautiful. Yeah. And when we initially, you're like whoa. Well, when we initially, you <laughs> trying to be cool, like when we initially, when we initially met. <laughs> uh, I have a real estate company and a media. Company. Okay. The media company was looking for a media host gotcha. who would not be caught up with some of the folks we were working with in Hollywood. Gotcha. And so I checked her out live. Uh, this was 019, right. summer of 019, checking her doing her live. And she was going in, she was on fire for the Lord, talking about yes. the truth of Always, God. Yes. She was like, I mean, every time I returned in, it was like a revival. I said, is this real? So I was yeah. tuned in a few times. I was kind of like Boaz looking in on roof, so to speak, you know, All kind right. of checking All her right. out. But when I found out that she was genuine, I did, you got ask, your boy. I, I, I did ask her to, uh, you know, obviously check out who we were. We have, right. a, we have a studio in D.C. And that we were, what we were looking for. And mm -hmm. so we actually met up. I had a business partner. We met her at a hotel. Actually, her daughter, who's here with us today, we happened to be in a hotel. Kayla, yes. <laughs> oldest daughter. And uh, so we did an actual interview. And at that time, wow, it was that's a great. professional meeting. That's it was, good. you know, she was responsive. Uh, and after that, what I didn't know was all the dy dynamic features that my wife has. She is like multi-talented. Yes, she multi is. Gifted, yes, she is. You know, truly beautiful, yes. but inward and outward. And so she had a, a skill set in marketing, which was different than her media hosting. So she actually did the website of my real estate company where okay. we're building a project in Vegas. And, and you know, we'll talk about that in a minute. But that really let me see, like, she had a lot going on. She could do marketing, website, but this was a preaching machine here. So yes, she is. We, you know, going back to her, uh, when I realized that, I had to step back and kind of let her, you know, support her with what she's doing, because she was doing her thing. Right. So the ministry between you two, like, how did, how, how did that combine? Because I know, well, I know that you're, well, I see you preaching. Yes. So, like, how did, you know? So I, I think... There's a lot that God considers when he matches two people. Okay. And so we were very similar. Even though we were meeting professionally at first, it wasn't romantic when we first met. It was all professional. But when okay. it switched to romantic, there was a lot that we had in common. And so wow. it was quite natural for us to kind of progress into ministry, you know, business. We're both marketplace ministers, so okay. that was where we connected. And so me being able to kind of bring in the, the marketing and the business advisories type deal, you know, and nonprofit. and nonprofit. We both are very passionate about working in the community. That's so good. that was where That's we good. seriously connected. Uh, we're even now working on um, restarting a foundation that he founded. So mm. a lot of core, core uh, belief systems that we had in, in common made it very easy for us to kind of hit the ground running. So we have not, I mean, from the time we started courting until now, we have not slowed down. It's almost as if God said, okay, Finally, you got your rib, now go. Wow. <laughs> and everything has accelerated. I heard somebody say, yes, I don't know who it was. <laughs> <laughs> somebody out there. <laughs> <laughs> so everything has accelerated since then. And so we've been trying to keep up with the Lord more so than the Lord trying. You know, we yeah. feel like the Lord is taking forever. But once we finally <laughs> said, I do, it's yeah. like, okay, God, now God, go. It yes. shifted everything. Everything wow. got shifted and accelerated. And God is truly 
been blessing us. Um, I'll let him share because I, you know, I'm proud of what my husband does. It's not a lot of African American yes. men that can speak to what he's doing. Yeah. And so I believe he's a trailblazer. And so I'm excited uh, for him to share about his project. I'll be quiet now because I talk a lot. Well, Bro, I, I, I look forward to hearing my wife, and I'll just do a plug first, <laughs> speak three, four times a week at the Winter Williams IG and okay. Facebook and ministry to women and men around the globe. Yeah. And so how we work together is I will be part of her as a guest, you know, host. Right. Uh, and, and, you know, it, the topics obviously is family. Right. Uh, and, and the topics can range from family to relationships to money. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is an area that I think the body of Christ now should begin to be prepared after this pandemic. I agree. That we should be prepared for the shift I agree. the kingdom of God. This is the hour of which God is allowing his believers, his disciples, to be raised up. Nobody's permission doesn't make no difference how wow. old, how young, what your background is. To do the work in the will of God, to advance his kingdom, to be like the early church. Mm -hmm. And so this is something that she and I connected on. And God blessed us with 25 acres in the Strip of Las Vegas, wow. south of Mandalay Bay. Now, you're going to hear about it coming up in New Hollywood Experience, but it's a covert operation to advance God's kingdom. It has a lot of similarities from a place that you will see. The church may call it like the largest family life center in the country because it wow. will be some million square feet, wow. 10 buildings. Okay. Uh, but it has like hotels, the one you have from across from Disney, the Radisson Blue Hotel, non gambling hotels. So when okay. families want to come in, no gambling. The only okay. thing that Vegas has right now is Circus Circus. But okay. even if you go there, you have to go through the gambling, the smoking, yeah. just to get yeah. that back where the old yeah. circuit hasn't been updated. So the, we're working with the governor's office. We're about 18 months in. So we break around this November. We actually start Congratulations. Moving, we start moving dirty in July. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be a major impact for the kingdom. A lot of uh, national ministries and those who are going to be plugged in, uh, local community ministers, uh, my wife and I. Uh, we're really excited about what God's about to do. We already have three other cities that asked us to bring you out of the experience. Wow. And so, yeah, this is God's work. It's a time for the body to shift. Mm -hmm. I, I, I totally agree um, with, with what you're saying because um, I think after the pandemic, because it will be over, but I, and, but I think after it, like especially for money-wise, for the kingdom, um, you know, my pastor is telling us, save save your money because after you're going to need it you know to actually build some things and so what you're saying is actually key and it's wisdom yep. you know so i thank you for that wisdom to impart into so many that are listening so um question for you guys i uh, when it comes to um so you said you're seeing like like the blended relationships and how they didn't work um so if i was so I, i'll put it in this way I know two people who are planning to get married, mm -hmm. and the guy talks to me all the time. I tell Tommy about it. He talk about talk. He talks to me about his girlfriend, whatever, whatever she is, um, like all the time. You know, he's like, "Man, you about to get married?" I said, "I don't care." But this is what he says to me, and so because when you keep talking to me about it, it's like, "Did y'all get married?" Yeah, because you keep saying it. But he, you know, he's saying, you know, she got like three kids, and I got two. And he said, but they bad, man. I said, I don't think that's going to work. But, you know, you, so I don't say that. I didn't say that to him. But in my mind, I was like, I don't think that's going to work because he don't like the kids. So what, what would your advice be to somebody who's, you know, already not liking the kids? It's kind of like, you know, yeah. I honestly think that every couple should have premarital counseling especially blended families, yeah. because you really need to, dis to discuss parenting styles. Your parenting styles may be different. How you view discipline may be different. Um, what is the relationship with the other um, parents? There are other co-parents that may be involved. What is the connection? What is the involvement? Those are things that seriously impact your ability to have a healthy relationship with the children and a healthy relationship with each other. Mm -hmm. And so I honestly would advise your friend <laughs> to... I, get, remember, you, I, I said, you know what, go to uh, Kevin and uh, Winters uh, Williams thing, then you can find out what they're doing. Listen, it's, it's this brother. is something we speak to often because I think, unfortunately, it, this is our 
it's our society. A mm. lot of families are comprised of blended families. Yeah. There's not too many families that are staying together for the long sure. haul. Now, Kevin's parents have been married for 60 years. Wow. That is the legacy that we come up under. That's but great. neither one of us followed that legacy. <laughs> you know, we're, this is a, a do-over for us, right. right? But we want to pass that legacy on to our kids. But that starts with first being two healthy and whole individuals and then doing the work. And so often we don't want to do the work. The fairy tale only lasts for so long. Mm. The work kicks in afterwards. But you have to start with a solid foundation. I think you should always seek to give your family its best chance. And that starts with giving yourself your best chance. And so I, I think the better off you are whole as a person, the better off your family is whole. But don't negate addressing the issues. That has to happen. Wow. And from the man's perspective, particularly yeah. when it comes to the kids, the man is responsible to set the atmosphere, okay, from the Garden of Eden to now. Right. So when things don't go right in the house, you know, God's not saying, where is Eve? He mm -hmm. said, where are you? Adam. Uh -huh. So the man has to man up. If those children, regardless of where they are, whether he's got to get help, counsel, right. leadership right. training to be a good father, he's got to be responsible to know how to love on those kids. Right. While, of course, he's loving his wife and setting an example of how he loves his wife first. One thing my kids will know, I love up on her, sometimes to the point where they can't stand it. But That's I love good. up on my wife. And they know that. They see it. It's not fake. It's just who I am. Mm -hmm. And so that comes for me. And then there's times when, you know, I'm because I, I, I think it's the man's responsibility to take full responsibility. Like right. call, if you call yourself a king, then that palace is your responsibility. And most wow. men don't like his, particularly in the black community. That's your responsibility. The helpmate is there to help you. I like that. Okay, which means it starts from doing the simple things, the laundry. We got six kids. Those kids, <laughs> yeah, know. we got six kids. <laughs> those things, those six kids know I take leadership. I don't right. put it off on her. I don't put that's my responsibility. Now, when they help me, and I set an example for how we need to clean the house, which we do. We have water in the house. How things get done. The boys, seventeen, thirteen. The trash is done by one. The floor is done by another. You know, these are practical things. This is how you serve your wife. Now, she's the queen, so she gets served most of her breakfast and lunch and bread. And bread. True. But, but we set, again, I'm setting an example. I want the boys to see how you treat a lady. So wow. the love and the family <laughs> I know it has that. to set and set. I was using my father. Go ahead. The, the, the love has to I'm be joking. set I'm in the home because what we're about to do in Vegas and other cities, we're creating a family, you know, life center, a family fun field center. Right. There can be wave pools, surf pools, you know, laser tag, you know, off bumper cars, all these things that people have fun. But in the upper room is where we're going to have prayer and worship and family therapy and all kinds of things that do with the whole person, mind, body, and soul. And so we have to set that example first amongst our own family, with our kids, and with others in the community. And so the man is responsible, comes back to him. And I just say that in this particular case, any man needs to man up, be the example of loving his wife, and set an example of reaching his kids. All right, so when he come to me this time, like, man, man up. That's it? <laughs> no, you got to, you know, he's going to need help. Like, all of us, look. I'm joking. Look, look, it's all, all of us, you know, start in Absolutely. a certain place. Absolutely. Uh, I was telling the brother who was on here uh, man. last. That's a uh, man. Yeah that uh, I, I was working in Camden, New Jersey here for four years, and a lot of our brothers who unfortunately did not get the access options and opportunities that some others have, uh, they need more help, they need more wraparound services, wraparound support. Yeah. And so whether they are locked up, or whether they're out on the street, or whether they're just trying to make it happen and take care of their family right, and struggling, right. they need that support. So right. yeah, you don't start here. This is years of work and yeah. God's working. but. Again, yeah, man have to like That's find right. a way to man up. Yes. Wow. Thank you guys so much. So Thank much. So I, I, I need you to please that's your camera. So <laughs> both of you could do it or one of you could do it. But um just tell everybody where they can reach you, get in touch with you. Y'all always traveling, so I don't know how they're gonna reach you, but go ahead. <laughs> well, you can reach us by <laughs> website, thewinterwilliams.com, Facebook and IG, the Winter Williams, YouTube, Winter Williams Official. And you can connect with us on all of those there. Thank you guys so, so much. You have graced this place, and I'm so glad that you came. Thank you for having um, us. Thank you, sir. Thank you for, thank thank you, sir. for allowing us to be here. Absolutely. Yeah. Kevin and Winter Williams, you guys. Come on, do it up. <laughs> and we'll be right back.
Welcome back to the coach, you guys. So, so this is my final thought, and usually we do one at the end of the show. My final thought is the word layers. When I thought about layers, I said, why am I talking about layers? Here's why. Because most of the times, we don't know that's what's on us to actually get to actually, that, well, we don't know that's on us, and we don't know that's, what's, that's actually what's reacting out, um, or acting out most of the times. When you bake a cake, I don't know how to bake a cake, but I've seen it done. It's, it takes a lot of things to be put in the cake, you know, and it takes time, you know, but it took time to put layers on you. Whoever's called you this and said this and said this, those are layers. But the thing is, I was always told that when you want to break a habit or be, uh, from, uh, from doing something or being around something, you got to stop being around that environment so the layers can break off of you. So my final thought would be to you is break the layers. Actually get away from certain things and get away from people that's going to say, well, you know what? I, I saw that. That is kind of like, you know, generational with you. No, get away from that stuff. Because here's the thing. You are the one that can break that by actually doing something different. Thank you for coming on The Culture. Love you guys.